Preface to Severn Somme by Ivor Gurney. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Severn and Somme by Ivor Gurney. Preface this book stands dedicated to one only of my friends but there are many others to whom i would willingly dedicate singly and in state if that did not mean the writing of forty books of verse and dedications a terrible thing for all concerned so that under the single name and sign of homage and affection i would desire such readers as come to me to add also to my father and mother, F. W. Harvey, also a Gloucestershire lad, Miss Marion Scott, whose criticism has been so useful, and she so kind in spite of my continued refusal to alter a word of anything, the vicar of Twigworth, Herbert Howells, and this is not the last time you will hear of him, Mr. Hilaire Belloc, whose Path to Rome has been my trench companion with The Spirit of Man, Mr. Wilfred Gibson, author of Friends, a great little book, many others also, including Shakespeare and Bach, both friends of mine, and last but not least, my comrades in two platoons of the Gloucesters, who so often have wondered whether I were crazy or not. Let them draw their own conclusions now, for the writing of this book it was that so distracted me. This is a long list, and even now does not include old Mrs. Poyner, who was so jolly and long-suffering, nor my boat Dorothy, now idle in the mud, though a poet sang of her full glory at Framilode. Even as I write, the list becomes fuller, further extended, yet a soldier must face pain, and so it remains shorter by far than might be. I fear that those who buy the book, or even borrow, to get information about the Gloucesters, will be disappointed. Most of the book is concerned with a person named myself, and the rest with my county Gloucester, that, whether I die or live, stays always with me, being in itself so beautiful, so full of memories." whose people are so good to be friends with, so easy-going and so frank. Some of the aforementioned people I have never had good fortune enough to meet in the flesh, but that was not my fault. I hope that you will forgive my using their names without permission. Ah, would they only retaliate in kind? That is, however, not lightly, as I was never famous, and a common private makes but little show. All these verses were written in France, and in the sound of guns, save only two or three earlier pieces. This should be a reason enough to excuse any roughness in the technique. If more reason is required, people at home, and most of all, people of Gloucester, may well be indulgent to one who thought of them so often, and whose images of beauty in the mind were always of Gloucester, County of Cotswold, and Severn and a plain, rich, blossomy, and sweet of airs, as the wise Romans knew, who made their homes in exile by the Brown River, watching the further bank for signs of war. Ivor Gurney, Spring 1917 End of Preface Recording by Alan Mapstone To Certain Comrades by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone E. S. and J. H. Living we loved you, yet withheld our praises before your faces. And though we had your spirits high in honour, after the English manner, we said no word. Yet, as such comrades would, you understood. Such friendship is not touched by death's disaster, but stands the faster. And all the shocks and trials of time cannot shake it one jot. 
beside the fire at night some far december we shall remember and tell men unbegotten as yet the story of your sad glory of your plain strength your truth of heart your splendid coolness all ended all ended yet the aching hearts of lovers joy uncovers glad in their sorrow hoping that if they must come to dust an ending such as yours may be their portion and great good fortune that if we may not live to serve in peace england watching increase then death with you honoured and swift and high and so not die in trenches july nineteen sixteen end of poem this recording is in the public domain the fire kindled by ivor gurney read for librivox dot org by alan mapstone god that i might see framilode once again red barley all renewed clear shining after rain and cranum cranum trees and blaze of autumn hues portway under the moon silvered with freezing dews may hill that gloucester dwellers gainst every sunset sea and the wide severn river homing again to the sea the star of afterglow venus on western hills dimmock in spring o oh, spring of home o oh, daffodils and malvern's matchless huge bastions of ancient fires these will not let me rest so hot my heart desires here we go sore of shoulder sore of foot by quiet streams but these are not my rivers and these are useless dreams end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the poets before battle by ivor gurney read for librivox dot org by alan mapstone now youth the hour of thy dread passion comes thy lovely things must all be laid away and thou as others must face the riven day unstirred by rattle of the rolling drums or bugle's strident cry when mere noise numbs the sense of being the fear-sick soul doth sway remember thy great craft's honour that they may say nothing in shame of poets then the crumbs of praise the little verseman joyed to take shall be forgotten then they must know we are for all our skill in words equal in might and strong of metal as those we honoured make the name of poet terrible in just war and like a crown of honour upon the fight end of poem this recording is in the public domain maysmore by ivor gurney read for librivox dot org by alan mapstone oh when we swung through maysmore the maysmore people cheered and women ran from farmyards and men from ricks afeard to lose the sight of soldiers who would for christmas day blow kaiser william's army like mist of breath away the war it was but young then and we were young unknowing the path we were to tread the way the path was going and not a man of all of us marching across the bridge had thought how home would linger in our hearts as maysmore ridge when the darkness downward hovers making trees like german shadows how our souls fly homing homing times and times to maysmore meadows 
by Ober's ridge that may's more men have died in vain to hold the burning thought but once desires may's more in mourning gold oh when we march through may's more past many a creaking cart we little thought we had in us love so hot at heart end of poem this recording is in the public domain Afterwards by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by Joanna Michael Hoyt Afterwards Those dreadful evidences of man's ill-doing The kindly mother of all shall soon hide deep, Covering with tender fingers her children asleep, Till time's slow cycle turns them to renewing In other forms their beauty, No grief, no ruing irrevocable woe, They'll lie, they'll steep their hearts in peace unfathomed, Till they leap quick to the light of the sun As flowers strewing, maybe, their own friends' paths. And that's not all. When men who knew them walk old ways alone, The paths they loved together, at even fall, The troubled heart shall know a presence near, Friendly, familiar, and the old grief gone. The new keen joy shall make all darkness clear, End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Carol by Ivor Gurney. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Winter has now bared the trees, killed with tiny swords, the jolly leafage that midsummer sees, but left the ivy and the holly. Hold them high and make delight. For Christus joy that's born tonight. All green things but these have hid their heads, Or died in melancholy. Winter spite them all his rid, Save only ivy and brave holly. Give them place in all men's sight, For Christus grace that's born tonight. Baby eyes are pleased to see bright red berries, And children jolly so shout and dance and sing with glee, And honor ivy and prickly holly. Honor courage and make delight for Christ's sake that's born tonight. Christus natus hodi, drink deep of joy on Christmas Day. Join hands and sing a roundelay, for this is Christ's and children's day. Christus natus hodi, hodi. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Strange Service by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone Little did I dream, England, that you bore me under the Cotswold Hills, beside the water meadows, to do you dreadful service here beyond your borders and your enfolding seas. I was a dreamer ever, and bound to your dear service meditating deep i thought on your secret beauty as through a child's face one may see the clear spirit miraculously shining your hills not only hills but friends of mine and kindly your tiny knolls and orchards hidden beside the river muddy and strong flowing with shy and tiny streamlets safe in its bosom now these are memories only and your skies and rushy sky pools fragile mirrors easily broken by moving airs in my deep heart for ever goes on your daily being and uses consecrate think on me too o oh mother who rest my soul to serve you in strange and fearful ways beyond your encircling waters none but you can know my heart its tears and sacrifice none but you repay end of poem this recording is in public domain serenity by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org Nor steel, nor flame 
has any power on me, save that its malice work the Almighty will. Nor steel nor flame has any power on me. Through tempests of hellfire, I must go free and unafraid. So I remember still, nor steel nor flame has any power on me, save that its malice work the Almighty will. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Signaler's Vision by Eva Gurney. Read for LibriVox.org by M. Lee. One rainy winter dusk, mending a parted cable, sudden I saw so clear home and the tea table. So clear it was, so sweet, I did not start but drew the breath of sweet content some minutes ere i knew my mother's face that soother than autumn half-lights kind my softly smiling sisters who keep me still in mind were but a dream a vision that faded and i knew the smell of trench trench feeling and turned to work anew end of poem this recording is in the public domain the mother by ivor gurney read for librivox dot org by james k white we scar the earth with dreadful injury she takes us to her bosom at the last hiding our hate with love who cannot see of any child the faults and holds us fast we'll wait in quiet till our passions past end of poem this recording is in the public domain. To England, a note, by Ivor Gurney, read for LibriVox.org, by James K. White. I watched the boys of England where they went through mud and water to do appointed things. See one a stake, and one wire netting brings, and one comes slowly under a burden bent of ammunition. Though the strength be spent, they carry on under the shadowing wings of death the ever-present. And hark, one sings, although no joy from the gray skies be lent. Are these the heroes these have kept from you the power of primal savagery so long? Shall break the devil's legions? These they are, who do in silence what they might boast to do. In the height of battle, tell the world in song how they do hate and fear the face of war. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Bach and the Century by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by James K. White Watching the dark my spirit rose in flood On that most dearest prelude of my delight The low-lying mist lifted its hood The October stars showed nobly in clear night When I return and to real music-making And play that prelude, how will it happen then? Shall I feel, as I felt, a sentry hardly waking, with a dull sense of no man's land again? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Letters by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by James K. White Mail's up! The vast of night is over, and love of friends fills all one's mind. His wife, his sister, or his lover. Mail's up! The vast of night is over. The gray-faced heaven joy does cover with love, and God once more seems kind. Mail's up. The vast of night is over, and love of friends fills all one's mind. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Strafe by Eva Gurney. Read for LibriVox.org by M. Lee. The crumps are falling twenty to the minute. We crouch and wait the end of it, or us, just behind the trench before and in it. The crumps are falling twenty to the minute. O oh, Framelode, O oh, Maysmore's laughing linnet. Here comes a monster like a motor bus. The crumbs are falling twenty to the minute. We crouch and wait the end of it or us. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Acquiescence by Ivor Gurney. Read for LibriVox.org. By Larry Wilson. Since I can neither alter my destiny by one hair's breadth from its appointed course, since bribes nor prayers nor any earthly force may from its pathway move a life not free, I must gather together the whole strength of me. My senses make my willing servitors, cherish and feed the better, starve the worse. Turn all my pride to proud humility, Meeting the daily shocks and frozen, Stony, cynical face of doubt with smiles and joy, As a battle with autumn winds delights a boy, Before the smut of the world and the lust of money, Power and fame can yet his youth destroy, Ere he has scorned his father's patrimony. In the poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Strong Thing by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone I have seen death, and the faces of men in fear of death, And shattered, terribly ruined flesh, appalled. But through the horror, coloured and clear, The love of my county, Gloucester, rises afresh and on the day of days the judgment day the word of doom awaiting breathless and still i'll marvel how sweets the air down framelode way and take my sentence on sheer down crickley hill end of poem this recording is in the public domain scots by Eva Gurney. Read for LibriVox.org by M. Lee. The boys who laughed and jested with me but yesterday, so fit for kings to speak to, so blithe and proud and gay, are now but thoughts of blind pain and best hid away. Over the top this morning at the dawn's first gray. Oh, if we catch the Kaiser, his dirty hide to flay, We'll hang him on a tall tree, his pride to allay, That will not bring the boys again to mountain and bray, Over the top this morning at the dawn's first gray. To think, earth's best and dearest, turn to red, broken clay, By one devil's second, 
What words can we say? Or what gift has God their mother's anguish to repay? Over the top this morning at the first flush of day. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To an Unknown Lady by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org You that were once so sweet Are sweeter now that an even leaden grayness clouds my days. A pain it is to think on your sweet ways, Your careless tender speaking, tender and low. When the hills enclosed us, hid in happy valleys, Greeting a thousand times the things most dear, We wasted thoughts of love and laughter clear, And told our passion out in mirthful sallies. But in me now a burning impulse rages To praise our love in words like flaming gold. Molten and live forever, not fit for cold, And coward like to passions time assuages. Nor do I fear you are lovely only in dreams, Being as the sky reflected in clear streams. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Song and Pain by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by James K. White Out of my sorrow have I made these songs. Out of my sorrow, though somewhat of the making's eager pain from joy did borrow. Some day, I trust, God's purpose of pain for me shall be complete. And then, to enter in the house of joy, prepare my feet. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Purple and Black by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by James K. White The death of princes is honored most greatly. Proud kings put purple on in manner stately. Though they have lived such life as God offends, Gone fearful down to death, sick without friends. And in the temple dim, trumpets of gold proclaim their glory. So their story is told. In sentimental hymns, weeping her dolor, the mother of heroes wears vile black, death's color, who should walk proudly with the noblest one of all that purple throng. This was my son. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. West Country by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone Spring comes soon to Maysmore and spring comes sweet with bird songs and blue skies on gay dancing feet but she is such a shy lady i fear we'll never meet yet some day round a corner where the hedge foams white i'll find spring sleeping in the young crescent night and seize her and make her yield all her delight but yon's a glad story that's yet to be told 
his grey winter's bareness and no shadowed cold o oh, spring with your music your blue green and gold come shame this hard wisdom with laughter and gold end of poem this recording is in the public domain firelight by ivor gurney read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson silent bathed in firelight in dusky light and gloom the boys squeezed together in the smoky dirty room crowded round the fireplace a thing of bricks and tin they watch the shifting embers till the good dreams enter in that fill the low hovel with blossoms fresh with dew and blue sky and white clouds that sail the clear air through they talk of daffodillies in the bluebell's skyey bed till silence thrills and murmurs at the things they have said and yet they have no skill of words whose eyes glow so deep they wait for night and silence and the strange power of sleep to lift them and drift them like sea-birds over the sea where some day i shall walk again and they walk with me end of poem this recording is in the public domain the estaminet by ivor gurney read for librivox dot org by alan mapstone the crowd of us were drinking one night at reyes balool the glasses were a-clinking the estaminet was full and loud with song and story and blue with tales and smoke we spoke no word of glory nor mentioned foreign yoke but yarns of girls in blighty vain jolly ugly fair stand-offish foolish flighty and oh that we were there when never thuds a minny but minny smiles at you a meeting in the spinney with kisses not a few and of an inn that johnson does keep the rising sun his friends call him jack johnson he's gloucester's only one and talk of poachers habits but girls ever and again of killing weasels rabbits stoats pheasants never men although we knew to-morrow must take us to the line in beer hid thoughts and sorrow in ruddy and white wine when all had finished drinking though still was clear each head we said no word went slinking straight homeward into bed oh never lads were merrier nor straighter nor more fine though we were only terrier and only second line oh i may get to blighty or hell without a sign of all the love that filled me leave dumb the love that filled me the flood of love that filled me for those dear comrades of mine end of poem this recording is in the public domain song by ever gurney read for librivox dot org by m lee only the wanderer knows england's graces or can a new see clear familiar faces and who loves joy as he that dwells in shadows do not forget me quite o severn meadows end of poem this recording is in the public domain ballad of the three spectres by ivor gurney read for librivox dot org by alan mapstone as i went up by overlers in mud and water cold to the knee there went three jeering fleering spectres that walked abreast and talked of me 
the first said here's a right brave soldier that walks the dark unfearingly soon he'll come back on a fine stretcher and laughing for a nice blighty the second read his face old comrade no kind of lucky chance i see one day he'll freeze in mud to the marrow then look his last on picardy though bitter the words of these first twain curses the third spat venomously he'll stay untouched till the war's last dawning then live one hour in agony liars the first two were behold me at sloping arms by one two three waiting the time i shall discover whether the third spake verity End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Communion by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Beauty lies so deep on all the fields, Nothing for the eyes but blessing yields. Tall elms, greedy of light, stand tiptoe. See the last light linger in their tracery. The guns are dumb, are still all evil noises. The singing heart in peace softly rejoices. Only unsatisfied with beauty's hunger and sacramental thirst, nothing of anger. Mist wraiths haunt the path as daylight lessens. The stars grow clearer and my dead friend's presence. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Time and the Soldier by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone How slow you move, old time! Walk a bit faster! Old fool, I'm not your slave! Beauty's my master! You hold me for a space! What are you, time? A ghost, a thing of thought, an easy rhyme? Some day I shall again, for all your scheming, See Severn Valley clouds, like banners streaming, And walk in Cranham lanes by Maysmore go. But, fool, decrepit fool, you are so slow. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Influences by Ever Gurney Read for LibriVox.org When woods of home grow dark, I grow dark too. Images of strange power fill me and thrill me that hour sombre of hue the woods of dunsinane i walk and know what storms did shake macbeth that brought on duncan's death and his own woe strange whispers chill the blood of evil breath such rumors as did stir witch and foul sorcerer on the lone heath no power have these on me i know too well their weakness to condemn spring will exorcise them with one bluebell end of poem this recording is in the public domain afterglow by Ivor Gurney, read for LibriVox.org, by Larry Wilson. To F. W. Harvey Out of the smoke and dust of the little room, with tea-talk loud and laughter of happy boys, I passed into the dusk. Suddenly the noise ceased with a shock, left me alone in the gloom, to wonder at the miracle hanging high, tangled in twigs, the silver crescent clear. Time passed from mind. Time died. 
and then we were once more at home together you and i the elms with arms of love wrapped us in shade who watched the ecstatic west with one desire one soul uprapped as still another fire consumed us and our joy yet greater made that bach should sing for us mix us in one the joy of firelight and the sunken sun end of poem this recording is in the public domain hail and farewell by ever gurney read for librivox dot org by m lee the destined bullet wounded him they brought him down to die far off a bugle sounded him retreat good-bye strange that from ways so hated and tyranny so hard should come this strangely fated and farewell word he thought some old sweat might have thrilled at heart to hear gone down into the night too proud to fear but i the fool at arms musician poet to boot who hail release what charms in this salute he smiled the latest jest that time on me shall play and watched the dying west went out with the day end of poem this recording is in the public domain Praise by Ivor Gurney, read for LibriVox.org, by Larry Wilson. O friends of mine, if men mock at my name, say children loved him, since by that word you will have far removed him from any bitter shame. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Winter Beauty by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone I cannot live with beauty out of mind. I seek her and desire her all the day, Being the chiefest treasure man may find, And word most sweet his eager lips can say. She is as strong on me as though I wandered, in severn meadows some blue riotous day but since the trees have long since lost their green and i an exile can but dream of things grown magic in the mind i watch the sheen of frost and hear the song orion sings and hear the star-born passion of beethoven man's consolation sung on the quivering strings beauty of song remembered sunset glories mix in my mind till i not care nor know whether the stars do move me golden stories or ruddy copsewold in the sunset glow i am unwrapped and not my own immortal in winds of beauty swinging to and fro beauty immortal not to be hid desire of all men each in his fashion give me the strong thirst past satisfaction for thee and fire not to be quenched o oh, lift me bear me along touch me make me worthy that men may seek me for beauty mistress immortal healer of wrong end of poem this recording is in the public domain Song of Pain and Beauty by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by Yogi McCall Song of Pain and Beauty To M.M.S. Oh, may these days of pain, these wasted seeming days, somewhere reflower again, with scent and savor of praise, 
Draw out of memory all bitterness of night with thy son's rays. And strengthen thou in me the love of men here found and eager charity that, out of difficult ground, spring like flowers in barren deserts, or like light, or a lovely sound. A simpler heart than mine might have seen beauty clear where I could see no sign of thee, but only fear. Strengthen me, make me to see thy beauty always in every happening here. In Trenches, March 1917 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Spring, Rouen, May 1917 By Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone I am dumb, I am dumb and here's a Norman orchard, and here's spring, goading the sullen words that will not come. Romance, beating his distant magical drum, calls to a soldier bearing alien arms. Throw off your yoke, and hear my darling sing, blackbirds by red-roofed farms, more drunk than any poet with May's delight green alive to the eye and pink and white joy's there but not for me and song but shall i sing that live as in a dream of some bad night whose memories are of such ecstasy and height of passionate joy that pain alone is born of beauty in cloud and flower and tree yes and the great cathedral's towering stone to me these are but shadows of orchards and old meadows trodden before the dawn trodden after dusk all loveliness of france is as a husk the inner living spirit of beauty gone to that familiar beauty now withdrawn from exiles hungering ever for the sight of her day face england's or in some orchard space breathless to drink peace from her calm night how shall i sing since she sings not to me songs any more high rule she holds for ever on the sea that's hers but dreams too might guard the shore of france that's french and set apart for ever a spirit of love our link of song doth sever had it been hate the weakest of all sworn enemies of love we should have broken through or passed above its foolish barriers here we must bow as to established fate and reverently for comrades and high peers sisters in blood our mothers brook no rival in their state of motherhood but not for ever shall our travails last and not for ever we be held by iron duty over sea the image of evil shall be overcast and all his willing slaves and priests of evil scattered like dust shall lie upon the plain that image ground to dust utterly level with unregarded weeds and all is vain the oppressed shall lift their hearts up once again and we return not to scarred lands and homes laid in the dust not with hard hearts to sights that sear and burn but with assured longing and certain trust to england's royal grace and dignity to england's changing skies rich greenery high strength controlled queenly serenity inviolate kept by her confederate sea and hearts resolved to every sacrifice we shall come home we shall come home again living and dead one huge victorious host the dead that would not leave their comrades till the last steep were topped of the difficult hill the last farthing paid of the great cost the last thrill suffered of the great pain living and dead 
we shall come home at last to her sweet breast england's by one touch be paid in full for all things grey and long and terrible of that dread night which seemed eternity o oh, mother shall thy kisses not restore body and life-sick soul yes and set free songs and great floods of lovelier melody than thou didst give when we those days of half awake did live and joy must surely flower again more fair to us who dwelt in shadows and foul air we'll breathe and drink in song spring shall blot out all traces of old care her clouds of green and waves of gold among we shall grow free of heart and great and young be made anew of that great resurrection perfect as is the violet's perfection perfect as she who sanctifies our memory with sorrow hugs as a mother hugs the thoughts that harrow watching for dawn hungering for the morrow lone over sea i am dumb now dumb but in that time what music shall not come mother of beauty mistress of the sea end of poem this recording is in the public domain june to come by ivor gurney read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson when the sun's fire and gold sets the bee humming i will not write to tell him that i'm coming but ride out unawares on that old road of mentorsworth of peace of frambolode and walk not looked for in that cool dark passage never a single word myself the message and then well oh we'll drift and stand and gaze and wonder how we could in those bad days live without mentorsworth or western air fanning the hot cheek stirring the hair in land where hate of men god's love did cover this land and here's my dream irrevocably over in the poem this recording is in the public domain Hark, Hark the Lark by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Hark, Hark the Lark to Heaven's Gate a prison Pours out his joy. I think of you shut in some distant prison. O oh boy, poor boy, Your heart grown sick with hope deferred And shadows of prison ways, Not daring to snatch a thought of severn meadows Or old blue days. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Song at Morning by Ivor Gurney. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Praise for the day's magnificent uprising. Praise for the cool air and the blue, new old, ever surprising face of the sky and mirrored blue of the pool. Only the fool, bat-witted, owl-eyed fool, can hold a deaf ear while life begins the actual opening of a myriad stories. Blindness, ingratitude, the fulliest sins. Now, if this day blot out my chief desires, and leave me maimed and blind and full of hot surges of insurrection, evil fires, memories of joys that seem better forgot, quiet me then thy will is binding on the nearest flower as on the farthest star and what shall put me out of thy power or from thy guidance far though i in hell of myself will would shut me but if thy will be joy for me to-day give me clear eyes a heart open to feel thy influence thy kindness o oh, unseal the shut the hidden places in me reveal those things most precious secretly hidden away from all save children and the simply wise give me clear eyes and strength to know whatever may befall 
the eternal presence of great mysteries, glorifying thee for all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Trees by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by Joanna Michael Hoyt Trees You cannot think how ghastly these battlefields look under a gray sky. Torn trees are the most terrible things I have ever seen. Absolute blight and curse is on the face of everything. The dead land oppressed me. I turned my thoughts away and went where hill and meadow are shadowless and gay, where Cooper's stands by Cranham, where the hill gashes white show golden in the sunshine, our sunshine, God's delight. Beauty, my feet stayed at last where green was most cool. Trees worthy of all worship I've worshipped. Then, oh fool, let my thoughts slide unwitting to other dreadful trees, and found me standing, staring, sick of heart, at these. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Requiem by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone Requiem Pour out your light, O stars, and do not hold your loveliest shining from earth's outworn shell pure and cold your radiance pure and cold my dead friend's face as well requiem nor grief nor tears should wrong the silent dead save england's for her children fallen so far from her eager care though by god's justice led and fallen in such a war requiem pour out your bounty moon of radiant shining on all this shattered flesh these quiet forms for these were slain so strangely still reclining in the noblest cause was ever waged with arms end of poem this recording is in the public domain For England by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone Sonnets 1917 To the Memory of Rupert Brooke For England Though heaven be packed with joy bewildering Pleasures of soul and heart and mind Yet who would willingly let slip Freely let go earth's mortal loveliness go wandering where never the late bird is heard to sing nor full-sailed cloud galleons wander slow no pathways in the woods no afterglow when the air's fire and magic with sense of spring so the dark horror clouds us and the dread of the unknown but if it must be then what better passing than to go out like men for england giving all in one white glow whose bodies shall lie in earth as on a bed and as the will directs our spirits may go end of poem this recording is in the public domain Pain by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org By Ben Dowling Pain, pain continual, pain unending, Hard even to the roughest, but to those Hungry for beauty, not the wisest knows, Nor most pitiful hearted, what the wending Of one hour's way meant gray anatomy lending weight to the gray sky's gray mud where goes an army of gray bedrenched scarecrows in rows careless at last of cruelest fate sending seeing the pitiful eyes of men fordone or horses shot too tired merely to stir 
dying in shell holes, both slain by the mud. Men broken, shrieking even to hear a gun, till pain grinds down, or lethargy numbs her. The amazed heart cries angrily out on God. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Servitude by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by Ben Dowling If it were not for England, who would bear this heavy servitude one moment more? To keep a brothel, sweep and wash the floor of filthiest hovels were noble to compare with this brass-cleaning life. Now here, now there, harried in foolishness, scanned curiously over by fools made brazen by conceit and store of antique witticisms, thin and bare. Only the love of comrades sweetens all, whose laughing spirit will not be outdone, as night-watching men wait for the sun. To hearten them, so wait I on such boys, as neither brass nor hell-fire may appall, nor guns nor sergeant-majors bluster and noise. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Homesickness by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by Ben Dowling When we go wandering the wide air's blue spaces, Bare, unhappy, exiled souls of men, How will our thoughts over and over again Return to earth's familiar, lovely places, Where light with shadow ever interlaces, no blanks of blue nor ways beyond man's ken where birds are and flowers as violet as wren blackbird bluebell hedge sparrow tiny daisies oh tiny things but very stuff of soul to us so frail remember what we are set us not on some strange outlandish star but one caring for love Give us a home, there we may wait while long ages roll, content, unfrightened, by vast time to come. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. England the Mother by Ivor Gurney Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone we have done our utmost england terrible and dear task mistress darling mother and stern the unnoticed nations praise us but we turn firstly only to thee have we done well say are you pleased and watch your eyes that tell to us all secrets eyes see deep that burn with love so long denied with tears discern the scars and haggard look of all that hell thy love thy love shall cherish make us whole whereto the power of death's destruction is weak death impotent by boys be mocked at who will leave unblotted in the soldier's soul gold of the daffodil the sunset streak the innocence and joy of england's blue End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Severn and Somme by Ivor Gurney.